California. I grew up in Northeast Ohio. My <laughs> people! The Midwest! Yes, even the East Coast is where an Eastern Standard Time it all comes together. Um, yeah, I was born in Cleveland. I was in Cleveland Heights a few years and I grew up uh, in an area called Mayfield Village. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was a wild cat. Yeah, still am. And uh, what happened? Oh, I know. Uh, I, you know, I was doing acting in, in high school. I had a rock and roll band. I was always into radio. I was into cartoons. I was into comic books. You know, an artist. You know, like all of you guys. We're all artists. Everyone's an artist. Everyone can play. Everyone can perform. Everyone can create. Don't let anybody tell you a different. And the people who do, you say thank you for sharing and move on. <laughs> Want to stay with people who keep you up. Follow your dreams, follow your bliss, love, positivity. And with that, I... What was the question? <laughs> what's, what's the funniest or weirdest thing that's ever happened to okay, you uh, in your career? To to <laughs> so, uh, the short of the long is, I moved out to Los Angeles, California with my cousin. He had been in my rock and roll band and he wanted to hit the Sunset Strip, which is popularly known in Los Angeles. And I said, you know, I've been to New York, I've been to Chicago, I haven't checked out LA. Well, again, I'm jumping. I, after a series of jobs in the industry, I got a voice agent. I started auditioning. I started working. Now, this was not a job. And usually in a job is where they have an opportunity to really work with you and uh, get to know you, become familiar with you, and you get comfortable. You know what I mean? You, you, you wouldn't say anything particularly intimate because <laughs> you don't really know each other. But this particular gentleman uh, thought, <laughs> I don't know what he thought. <laughs> he had a strange thought life, I believe. Because I was auditioning for a superhero, and I imagine I'm behind a mic like I am now, and in front of me is a glass, there's a glass partition, uh, and there's the music stand in front of me that has the, uh, the script. And there's a director, and there's a producer, and there's an engineer on all the buttons and knobs, and maybe the writer. And this guy says, Quentin, Alright, now this character, back then you could smoke. So he had smoking, and he had a donut in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> and he had a coffee cup next to him, maybe five. And then, uh, I would like you to, uh... <laughs> model my life after you? <laughs> I want you to do it again. I want more range, you know, I range. You know, ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs. Start with the copy, you know, it could be anything, you know, and I just was like, sure. Um, we're gonna make this happen. I know we can do it. You know, have faith in me. This will work. I trust you. I know we can do this. I know we can do this together. It's going to happen. Glenn, can we do this again this time? I need some range. I need some ups and downs. <laughs> now, I was confused because I thought I gave him that. So I tried to adjust to his direction, you know, and I gave it to him again. He said, no, no, yeah, let me come into the booth. So he walks around into the booth, the door opens up. In comes Sir Chubblot. <laughs> his horrible beard, mustache. Uh, uh, some of the ones I've seen here actually look better than his real one. <laughs> and he had a broom, okay? He had a broom, and he wasn't a witch. And he said, here's what I'm going to do. You're gonna stand there in front of the mic, and I'm gonna take this broom and I'm put it between your legs. Uh, okay? Mind you, no, I have my pants on. <laughs> I, I never I ever got into that other industry. Okay? <laughs> yeah. And he said, so when I raise it, I want your voice to go high. And when I lower it, then you know, mid tempo or mid range to low. Up, high, down, low. And again, I was green, I was a young man, I didn't know how to say, I'm uncomfortable with this. <laughs> this seems unusual. I, I have a lot of experience, but no one's asked me to do this. Or, can we? Excuse me, on the other side of the glass, hey, is this normal? <laughs> <laughs> and so, I did, you know, I was like, okay, yes and, which is part of improv, yes and, and I'm, you know, like, I know we can do this. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> I think we can blast through to another time zone and we are going to find a hole. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> of the story, and it's going to be wonderful. <laughs> He's like, thank you so much. And he walked out of the booth. And I looked, and this one woman got up, and she opened the door, and she came up. She goes, I am so sorry. And I went, why? That was so unprofessional. My performance? No. What I did with the broom. <laughs> yeah, I kind of had it. <laughs> <laughs> and this is before fan fiction, so. <laughs> Didn't know any better. Learned my lesson. Never have it again. How about you in the back? Okay. Applause. Yes, we'll take that. <laughs>